This is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, remove and replace the thread tension unit on a vintage Singer sewing machine. Uh, I've done this before with a couple machines in the past, but I thought if you came here looking, um, this would maybe cover more models. This machine is a Model 413, but this type of tension unit goes back uh, decades in Singer machines with some minor uh, changes. So I'll just start here with um, turning the uh, this end piece here is called the tension indicator uh, flange adapter thumb nut. And someplace in that thumb nut there'll be a very small set screw and you need to loosen or remove that to start the disassembly. And uh, be real careful with it because it's a tiny little guy. And if it comes all the way out, it'll jump and fly away on you. Once you loosen that screw, you can uh, remove the thumb nut just by turning it left and unscrewing it from the tension indicator flange adapter. Then I'm going to I'm going to tighten that back up just so that I don't lose that set screw. The next piece that that will come off this this threaded piece is the is the flange adapter but this um, numerated uh, piece here um, in the front. This is called the um, the tension indicator flange. Um, yeah, tension indicator flange. Um, it's got the numbers on it from zero to nine. And you see the little tiny holes are left over from the days of the earlier models. They're not really used on this particular model 413. On the inside is a little uh, protrusion that sticks out that's called the stop, this little piece of plastic. I'll explain that when we put it back together. And then this is the flange adapter here and it's it's like a hollow nut um, with a flange on it that sticks out and it's got threads on the inside to go onto the tension stud this post that sticks out and it's got threads on the outside so that you can put the thumb nut on and then the next little piece is uh, called the flange stop washer and it's it's uh, like a washer with a horizontal line through it and a little finger that sticks up um, and that finger works with the stop inside the plastic uh, or metal piece that I just showed you that finger uh, goes up against the stop there that sticks out that's why you turn it from 0 to 9 and it stops at either end. It doesn't just keep uh, coming off and disassembling everything. And the stop washer is called stop because it stops the mm, tension spring from uh, coming farther out. I'll put it that way. This is also can be called the pyramid spring or the beehive spring. And it's a, it's a sturdy little uh, spring that pushes back on the tension disc. And you can see the last coil, the little one in the front, 
makes a 90 degree turn and goes through the uh, horizontal center and that's to go into the opening of the tension post and keep the spring from just spinning. Then the back, the back kind of cup shaped plate here is uh, called the, the uh, tension indicator and a lot of people just call it the plus minus. So when you're turning left it's uh, lower tension, when you turn the thumb nut right it's higher tension. And it also has a bar, horizontal bar there that keeps it uh, on the stud and prevents it from turning. Now these next few pieces will just come off as an assembly here. Uh, and they, they should. I'll get my other little finger in here. So there's uh, what, like five pieces here. Okay, and around the outside of it is uh, the thread take-up spring. And you'll notice in the back coil there's a little a 90 degree turn and a little bend uh, part of it sticks down and that's to slide it onto a knurled washer on the stud and lock that spring in place uh, where you adjust it so that it can actually uh, coil, coil back and make a spring instead of just you know if it's not on there that spring would just turn and turn. Okay, the other part of this this uh, it's kind of like a big washer with a little guide finger and a post and that post goes into a hole up here in the machine and that's what prevents it from just spinning around. Okay. And this is called the thread take-up spring thread guard. And then uh, behind that were the three tension discs. And when you see three tension discs like that, it's because the machine usually can double needle or twin needle sew. So you would run two threads. You could run two threads in the machine like this and put one thread between two discs. You really shouldn't put both threads between two discs. But that's why there's three here. Um, in rare exceptions you see three discs when the machine really isn't made for double needle. Like in the model 404 that's a straight stitch, a single uh, needle machine. And it's not really made to, to twin needle or double needle so but it still has the three discs because they use the same tension unit as the model 401 and 403. What you have left on here is a couple of uh, mm, uh, guides. This uh, taller one in the back um, is called the upper thread guide. So when you're bringing the thread down from the arm and going through the tension unit and back up to the take-up lever, it, this guides the thread in there so that it doesn't get tangled into any other part of the mechanism. And the horizontal one here, this is called the slack thread regulator and uh, tension guide. Um, tension thread guide. So this big chrome part here is to guide the thread uh, in between the tension disc and this little um, part that sticks out here is called the stop or the rest um, and that's where the that's where the tension uh, take-up spring comes to rest and that controls how much slack is on the needle thread um, as it enters and exits the fabric. And that, that is adjustable 
by the same screw that holds um, that slack is adjustable uh, by loosening and moving it and you're loosening this screw here that holds those two pieces to the machine and you can loosen it and adjust that rest or stop higher or lower I'll show you how to do that when we reassemble now if you if you need to replace or clean uh, these two guides you just remove that screw right there and then it just comes off the, the what I call the vertical guide the upper goes on first and then the horizontal one goes on second and you put the screw through it now if you want to remove the whole uh, tension stud to replace it or to clean it some machines will have a screw inside the nose uh, cover you'll see a set screw that lines up with the stud right here and you can loosen that screw and wiggle this and pull it out um, some of the machines like this 413 let me take the cover off here you you uh, go down from the top whoops <laughs> You go down from the uh, top and right down in there, just above that tension uh, stud, you'll see a set screw that you can back out a couple turns and then pull. And that's the same for most of the machines that I've worked on, is there's either one inside the nose uh, cover or there's or you access it from the top but either way it'll be lined up with that stud right so let's take a look in this nose real quick and make sure that uh, I'm telling you the truth yeah see the the vibrating bracket or the needle swing bracket is um, all built into the front here so there'd be no way to access but like on the 401 uh, um, 301 403 404 the Rocketeers you would come right in there and you could easily see the the set through to hold this but on on this model you come from the top and you come down there uh, behind this and you can loosen the set screw and uh, some some people want to do that to clean it or uh, if it's damaged to replace it I'm going to mention how I clean this now once I have once I have all the uh, parts off and I can inspect the stud and everything like that when I when I clean this and when I I work on a machine I always do this I always take it apart inspect all the tension parts clean them and put them back together and set the tension and for me I just have this strainer from the dollar store and I put all the parts in there and now you see why I why I took the time to tighten that um, um, screw back into the thumb nut and then when I have all the parts in there I just take them to a sink and I have a spray bottle and I spray them down with my, my favorite cleaner which is called crud cutter with K the letter K crud letter K cutter cleaner and degreaser because I can just spray them down and then rinse them right off and they're clean and uh, don't leave the crud cutter on uh, the painted metal ones or these uh, numeral painted items because it can dull and even remove the paint eventually and if you don't have crud cutter uh, I have used like uh, lemon joy dish detergent solution you know mix it up in a bowl and just put this down in the bowl and let it set for a minute or so to loosen all the, the grit and grime and stuff on there and then rinse them off once they're rinsed I usually uh, 
dry them with a hair dryer because I'm in a hurry, <laughs> you know. But you can towel dry them and, and uh, just be sure. Um, some items that can get um, show some flash rust would be the little uh, spring, the tension spring, beehive spring, and the, the uh, take up uh, spring. So those for sure you want to dry well, you know. But uh, once they're dry, then I'll just bring them back and put them back on the machine. And it just goes in reverse order. So the, the first thing I'm going to do is make my little uh, five part assembly with my three tension discs. And then the... Uh, take up spring thread guard, right? The little post at the top, and then over this, I'm going to uh, slide on my uh, take up spring, or also called the check spring. And remember, I I told you about that little tail that's in there. Well, when when this goes on. You'll see these this knurled washer here with like it looks like a plastic gear in here, or your machine may have metal still. And that little finger that sticks down is meant to slide in there between uh, two of the grooves. And the the one that you would normally pick would be the one where this hangs straight down at six o'clock. So that one, it looks like I missed it by one gear, so I'll pull it out and move it over. So let me see if you can. Now you can see that this is just hanging straight down. Okay, so if I keep an eye, I know which uh, gear space I'm going to put that into. So then I'm just going to slide this on with the, the single coil in the front. And the big coil in the back, and my little finger guard, or my not guard, but my little bent spring. And I'm going to slide all five of those pieces onto the stud. Make sure they go around the stud. Sometimes you, you get that single coil wants to go in the space between the stud opening and then I'm going to line up my uh, tail of the spring where I saw it before would line up here at six o'clock and then the post at the top is going to go into the hole in the machine right there and I'll just hold that on there while I gently bring this spring up above the spring rest or the spring stop right there. That little shelf that sticks out. And then I know I've got my tail in the gear because I actually have a springing action. And it comes here and rests on the stop. So that's the first part of the assembly. Next is the indicator, the plus uh, minus, and of course you want it to be facing up. So when you're sitting in front of the machine, you can look down and see it. That cup part is made to hold your tension spring. And this little um, bend, some people call the boat, uh, I've heard it called the teacup, and there's there's sometimes a controversy about whether that half coil goes down or up. And I haven't found that it matters too much on most of the machines. So I'm just going to put it down. Now, um, the next thing that would go on is remember the stop washer. And that does matter, and that little finger has to point up because it has to hit the little stop bar inside the indicator flange. 
Next, you actually put the tension indicator, no, the tension, yeah, the tension indicator flange adapter. And that pushes, that flange is going to push back on the stop washer and hold it in place. And this is the one that people have a little problem with getting started. It's a little tricky. <clears throat> Your stud can be bent here, you know, from people misusing it and stuff. But it's got to go on perfectly um, horizontal to the unit. And sometimes it helps me to, to turn it like a half turn back and it seems to like click on the thread and then it will usually tighten okay. And this is at the point now that you're going to set the tension on the unit. So I need to put my cover back on here. I'm not going to screw it down. I'm just going to set it on there because I need the spool pin. Because what I want to do is thread this unit and set the tension. So I'm going to take my thread. I like to use the old number 50 cotton thread. I'm going to take it through the thread guide on the arm and bring it down here. And I'm going to use this a tension thread guide. I just hold the thread there and I'll use that guide to slide it in between a couple, oops, between a couple of the discs there and pull it up against the check spring and over the positioning finger that sticks up. Okay, and then <clears throat> I'll take it up and up through this upper thread guide, right? Now, with the presser bar down, which will put uh, let that tension spring push back against the tension disc to create tension, what I want to do is kind of zero this out. So I'm just going to start pulling on the thread, you can see the check spring, and I'm going to start loosening it. Remember, the presser foot is down, and I'm going to start loosening it until I barely get any drag on the idea of zeroing it out is just to loosen it to the point where you get, uh, you can just barely feel any drag on the thread as you pull it. You know, you don't want it so loose that there's no drag. I want to have just, just a little bit. And I usually do it until I just see when I pull on it, the, the little uh, tension spring, uh, the mm -hmm, take up spring or check spring will just jump when I start to pull and then fall back. See, it just barely. So to me, that's what I call zero tension. You can set it looser than that uh, if you like, or you can set it harder, uh, tighter than that. The main thing is that you know how to uh, disassemble and reassemble this, and you can set the tension any way you like. I mean, you're going to be the sewer. You're going to be the crafter. So you can do it how you like. Once you determine where you want the zero setting to be, no tension, you're going to take your indicator dial and with the number one or two facing up, slide it on there, okay? And then once it's on, if you start turning it left, the finger on that stop washer will hit the protrusion or the stop mark and you'll see that you're at zero. And then you're going to hold that in place there and put your thumb uh, screw back on or your thumb nut. Now in some of the earlier models in this, like the 301, the 401, 
If you saw the big series I did on the 404, I did six videos just about tension. But there was a cap that went here. This was actually two pieces. <clears throat> and in the later models, they just combined it into one piece. And the set screw goes right through the th through the threads and pushes against the threads of, of the flange adapter. But anyway, you're going to put that on. For me, the same story. Sometimes if I start it left, it'll help line it up. And then I'm going to tighten it up against the indicator dial without adding more tension, without turning that uh, flange adapter anymore. I just want to get it up against that. Okay. So in this case, my set screw ended up over here on the side. So I'll come over here and tighten that now. Right? And then I'll test it. So with at zero, I can just barely feel the drag of this system on the thread as, I, as I'm pulling the thread up. Then if I go to like tension two, now you see how much it, it changed. I can, I can really feel uh, tension on that thread and you see the check spring coming up as I pull. You go to four, six, so that's how you you set it usually i set the machine planning that i want to sew straight stitch on about a four to five and as i get into a zigzag stitch i want to go less and less <clears throat> like back to three and two and a, a fine satin stitch baby one or zero so you you will set this how you like and then you can thread thread up the machine and sew at different tensions and see what forms the best lock stitch and if you don't like like maybe to get the best stitch you you've got to set it at eight well I think I would go back then and adjust the flange adapter to have uh, a little more um, tension at zero you know, if you have to turn it down to two to sew a normal straight stitch, um, maybe you had too much tension when you did the zero setting. So you, you take off the thumb nut and the, you don't even have to remove the dial really. You can take off, well, yeah, you should remove the dial and turn that uh, flange adapter to adjust the tension for the zero setting and a singer before and in my videos there's actually like a, a little gauge you could put on here and test how many grams of pull and so forth on this but I, f I find you're you're better off to just do it by touch because I've set them perfect according to the manuals and the people who bought the machine says, wow, there's too much tension on this. Or, hey, there's not enough tension. So I've reset it uh, with them there to what they liked. So that's why I just do it by feel now. And uh, now you know how to take off the unit and, and clean it and put it back on and kind of zero it out to what you like. And you can change that at any time you like. And it is important, you know, after you sew to brush this out, um, you know, lift up your uh, presser foot and turn it to zero so this is as loose as it's going to get. And take your lint brush and brush all around there. But, uh, you know, what if once a year you just took it apart like that and cleaned it real good and uh, made... Um, you know, made sure that it was working at optimal performance for you. Okay, so that's 
I guess that's enough time uh, of your time for this. That's um, pretty basic how to uh, remove, clean, replace, and zero out your thread tension unit. Uh, I'll put a link after the video that goes to my six video series I did on the model 401 or uh, 404 excuse me model 404 I did a six part series all about tension uh, it's a lot more detailed and, and more theory behind it and so forth if you have more questions thanks for tuning in uh, hope that was worth your time and maybe you learned a little something and I hope you'll come visit me um, again when you have time thanks for watching take care we're gonna make it mellow for you now we're gonna make it mellow now